Coming up on Regarding Men, finasteride. Is curing hair loss worth the risk? friends and welcome to regarding men where we hold men in high regard and where red pill isolation comes to die there it is <laughs> i'm janice fiamingo and i'm joined by my two comrades in arms mr elam eloquent elam of, eloquent elam i like that. <laughs> of, of Evil. paulelam.com <laughs> and golden mr golden of men are good <laughs> Golden, the name golden. says it all. <laughs> and today we're discussing a serious men's health issue that has to do with a drug called finasteride. Uh, it's made by a pharmaceutical company called Merck and Company, and uh, it's quite commonly prescribed, as far as I know, to treat uh, mainly. Uh, uh oh non-cancerous prostate enlargement and uh, i think it's quite commonly prescribed in 2018 there were nearly 9 million prescriptions for finasteride it's known by a uh, number of brand names one of them is proscar i think p-r-o-s-c-a-r and propecia uh, p-r-o-p-e-c-i-a uh, and I think there are others as well. And uh, so this is uh, fairly commonly used. And uh, if you read about the drug, and certainly if you read what Merck has to say about it, it will admit that there are some side effects, but it says that these side effects are very rare. Uh, and also um, quite importantly, that they go, a go away when one stops using the drug. But over the last few years, there has been a growing awareness that in fact that isn't the case that um, many men or at least a significant minority of men experience very dreadful side effects that actually continue even after the drug is discontinued in use and and there are now over 1100 men uh, suing uh, the drug company and information is coming out about what may, Merck may have known about those side effects and how they may have understated them. And they're terrible side effects. They, uh, they include um, uh, erectile dysfunction. They include very serious depression and suicidal ideation. And um, well, we just want men to know about the um, possible side effects of finasteride and, and to be very well aware of them uh, before considering taking it. Indeed, <clears throat> this is a risky drug. I mean, it, I think it's 4% of the people have, have problems, but who knows if that's the case? Who knows? Because, it, I mean, they've, they've sandbagged on the amount of, of, uh, of problem so far so I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if it wasn't more than four percent but the symptoms they talk about are really serious I mean some of these genital symptoms are very odd not just erectile dysfunction but your penis feels cold it's like oh something's wrong with that and it's just a dis lack of desire to to do anything you know and yeah. uh, you know the I think there was what they say 47 suicides uh, out of those 1100 it was 47 of them were suicides. So this is a very risky drug to take, gentlemen. And, you know, this is not so bad. That's not so bad. Don't worry about the hair. You worry about your health. Ay, ay, ay. And, you know, normally in, in these discussions, one of the first things I would say is that none of us are medical experts. That the, of the three of us talking here, we're not giving anyone medical advice. And, of course, I, I think it's obligatory to tell people, you know, you get medical advice from physicians. However, you know, while that is still true, I would also urge people to follow some of the links that we're providing below and read into these studies for yourself. Be an informed consumer. One of the studies that we'll link you to below cited 9.4% 
uh, of, sec of the, of the um, people evaluated reported sexual dysfunction. Um, that's a huge number. Yeah. That's nearly one in 10 uh, reporting sexual dysfunction after using finasteride and dutasteride, which is a derivative. I think all, Merck also makes that as well. Uh, but you're also seeing, as we'll get into this discussion here, a, a backlash from the medical establishment uh, against the idea. This is a very lucrative drug. It's prescribed for BPH, which is benign hyper, uh, prostatic hyperplasia or prostate swelling in, in men, which happens to most of us as we age, and for baldness. Uh, so this is given out to millions and millions uh, of men for those two, primarily for those two reasons. And when you're talking about people becoming suicidal, be their, their sexual lives disappearing, uh, you need to inform yourself before you take this drug. That's what I'm suggesting. Yes, talk to your doctor, but just because your doctors, we've found many times in history that just because your doctor is willing to prescribe something does not mean that it's good for you, that it's curative, or that it's not dangerous because yeah. plenty of drugs do have dangerous side effects. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is one yeah. of them. It certainly seems like it. Um, the, the article that you sent to me, Tom, which we'll include in, in the low bar as well by, by Reuters, uh, which tells the story of various lawsuits. Many of them, unfortunately, it sounds like they have been settled out of court by, by Merck. Um, but some of which are still going ahead, a particular one being carried forward by the widow of a man who committed suicide as a result of taking this drug because of hair loss, realizing that it was causing him all these horrific symptoms, going off the drug and still being not free of the symptoms. The symptoms simply persisted. And it's a very um, poignant story of um, you know what what he endured and and her anger at the company, and it includes um, quite a bit of suggestion that Merck has known that the side effects were worse than than you know what they reported. Um, partly, I, mean, I don't understand how all of this works exactly, but there was some discussion about the fact that they did a, a drug trial, but they didn't count in the results, those men that had dropped out of the trial right. because the side effects were so bad. Right. So, so, you know, they, they underreported because they didn't report these men as experiencing side effects because they hadn't gone through the whole trial conveniently. But the reason they dropped out was because it was so awful. So, um, uh, yeah, it, it, and, and they interviewed doctors many of whom going on the um, word of Merck and, and their reporting about these trials uh, would, would inform men about the side effects, but would reassure them that the side effects stopped if you stopped taking the drug. And of course, right. there's a world of difference between risking temporary side effects and risking permanent side effects. Correct. Most people, I think, are you know, if you if you're really worried about hair loss, for example, you think, well, okay, I'll try it. If I have these horrible side effects, I can just stop taking the thing. But if you know that you may get those side effects and never be able to be cured of them, and there are no known treatments for this these horrific effects. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a really terrible thing, and indeed, it seems as if many physicians have been misguided and and don't know the reality. Yes, and as much as the drug company sort of hid the results of this, it turns out that in this article they talk about the judge also hiding the results, <laughs> redacting things so that people couldn't see it. It's like, it's almost like they're working together, you know, the judge and the, and the pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. and, and it's more than just them. I mean, that's bad enough. But one of the things that struck me about this, Tom, if we could, can we go back to the graphic that we had just before this with the headline of that study? This is incredibly suspect to me. Here yes. we have a, a study that is insinuating that all these men reporting these side effects from using finasteride are part of some mass delusional syndrome. And they even included, as you look down into that study, 
that homosexual men were more likely to make these reports than, than heterosexual men. Uh, of course, the implication could be there that, uh, you know, if you're reporting this, you might be gay. Uh, <laughs> and and this, is, this is some scary stuff. I've never seen a study that dealt with the, the reported side effects of a medication in a way that, that points to uh, mass psychogenic illness uh, as this one is. This is awful. I mean, how do, how do people even do this with a clear conscience? Um, they don't have any proof. There's nothing in that study that proves that this is some sort of shared delusional uh, problem. There, there's, a, there's no evidence for it whatsoever. But it poses, and they, they're doing what, what they do in the media these days. When you want to make an insinuation uh, without making the insinuation, you frame it as a question. And this is exactly what they've done in this study, inferring that all these suicidal men, these depressed men, the men experiencing sexual dysfunction, all these horrible side effects are just crazy. They're, in other words, they're hysterical. Yes. And uh, I mean, to, to get Freudian about it, it, it is a, a hysterical reaction. Uh, the, and that might mean that your, 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 your sexuality is in question. Uh, this is about as low rent as it possibly gets for medical science, in my opinion. I can't believe that they're they're actually doing that. And there's no way that Merck isn't behind that headline. I guarantee it. Yeah, I'd love to see who funded that study, you know. I, 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 I Maybe the judge says we're not supposed to know. I think he does. I think he mm -hmm. does. Yeah. It is and interesting. Merck certainly, Merck seems to have its talking points very well in order because it talks about how uh, hair loss itself is something that lowers self-esteem, right? So therefore, many of the side effects such as depression and suicidal ideation and um, you know lowered sexual desire and just feeling bad about yourself, they are now saying that, well, of course the men feel these things because the men have experienced hair loss and these are the natural effects of of the hair loss rather than the effects of the drug that's being given for the hair loss. So they, they, they place themselves in the role of the saviors. They're offering this drug that can help these men uh, get over these terrible symptoms that are caused by the hair loss. So it's, it's uh, you know, a very neat circle for them. And the denial of responsibility is really worrisome. Yeah. And the feminists would say what? They'd say, oh, that's blaming the victim. Mm -hmm. which yeah. in this case it literally is it literally is yeah They're exactly blaming the men for their own side effects you yeah. know it must be your fault yeah and they can yeah. get away with, with all of this crap you know because of gynocentrism if this were reversed and it was women who were having side effects from a certain drug do you think for one minute they'd say that they were delusional they were suffering from a delusional disorder potential no. mass psychogenic illness <laughs> Hell no! They, they wouldn't be able to get that sentence finished before the lawsuits would be filed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, baby. Everybody and cares about would, women. And a judge would be on a crusade with them. Yes, he would. In, in that case. We're going to tear this drug company apart, looking for the truth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Crazy. This is some scary stuff. I mean, I... I would suggest anybody if you're experiencing you're in hesitancy which again with prostate swelling once you're past 40 or 50 and men this is a normal part of life this is something we have to contend with if you're experiencing that i would just urge everyone strongly not to rush to their doctor looking for something in a pill bottle that's going to fix it there are really? other options with this as a matter of fact one of the things i wanted to point out and we'll provide a, a link below there's a new treatment that they're calling Resume, and it actually uses steam uh, to shrink back part of the prostate. It's not considered an invasive procedure. Uh, it's done without a general anesthetic. They go in locally uh, and do the procedure with steam, and it's having some very good results, and there's no known sexual side effects like there is with, with normal prostate surgery and with these drugs which do have known side effects, they haven't experienced any of that yet. 
again, I'm not an expert on this at all. I, I urge people to investigate it for themselves and make very informed decisions, but we will provide a link below to that. As far as baldness is concerned, <clears throat> what can I say? Um, it's not cancer. Really? To lose your hair. Uh, it's just not. And uh, we do see a lot of men pursuing all kinds of extreme measures uh, to try to get their hair back. And I, I guess I get it in, in one way. On another part, this seems to be the one characteristic in men is about hair that sort of parallels what women do, which is all this incredible spending on physical appearance, uh, on cosmetic surgery, on, on cosmetics themselves. This is one area where men tend to be willing to spend. Um, uh, I tell you what, if your hair is that important that you're willing to risk that, I would personally reassess what was important to me. <laughs> yeah, the cosmetic industry is $64 billion a year. $64 billion. And that's, uh, compare it to the NFL, the NHL, and the MLB together is, I think, $32 billion. So, I mean, that's a huge, huge industry. And you're right. It's all about, you know, trying to look at it. Why do men do that? Because of the dominance hierarchy. I mean, a bald head makes you go down in the hierarchy. You know, you don't want to appear like that. You want to appear Unless you're as... Michael Jordan. <laughs> and that's true. When you're at the top of any hierarchy, as Jordan is at the top, all bets are off. All rules are off. You can do whatever you want to do. And everyone will go, Yay! But most of us are not Michael Jordan. Most of us have to live by those rules in the dominance hierarchy. And men will try and strive to get up as high as they can. And I can understand that. I can understand that. You know? But it's not worth it when they're giving out drugs. That no, no, in no. no. Ab yeah. Absolutely. No, I mean, this is this is way too scary, I think, to risk it. Yeah, uh, some of these I, stories I, that they told about these men horrible. are just very, very upsetting yeah. to hear. I mean, these are good men who are fathers, who are loving, who are yeah. having a great time in their life, they're successful, and then all of a sudden they start taking this drug, and boom, their life literally falls apart. Yeah. Everything falls apart. You know, not just a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but everything yeah. from their sex life to their relationship to their, their job. They quit their jobs and they jumped. This yeah. one guy jumped in front of a train. He'd had it. He could not do it any longer. Yeah. And yeah. This, is, the, it, this is critical yeah. for people to know that this is one possibility, you know. Mm, don't do it. And a not insignificant one from, oh, from the looks God. of the numbers. We really don't know actually how how significant, but it's it's right. way too risky, as you said, Tom. I think yeah. to uh, to take the chance. Yes, indeed. And a lot of this research, unfortunately, is brought to you by the same research physicians that that give you all the health benefits of circumcision. <laughs> um, it, it, of course, and that has nothing to do with the fact that circumcision is a $1.2 billion industry uh, in the United States. Absolutely nothing to do with the money not. at all. It's about your health. You need to cut the end of your penis off in order to be healthy. Um, that's what doctors will tell you in this society. And I think we're getting the same line of bullshit about finasteride from, from them. There's mm -hmm. big money behind this. Yeah. Therefore, we're not going to find any real problems. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Some fellow was telling me the other day, how can men be expected to give consent when their first sexual experience was basically without their consent? They were raped by a metal object cutting off half their dick. I mean, seriously, you know, that's a man's first sexual experience. Those men who have been circumcised. Mm -hmm. It's nutty. Absolutely nutty. Ugh. I don't even want to think about that crap. Well, yeah, if you can slide that one past, man, I guess getting pen uh, financial <laughs> exactly. is pretty easy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. But anyway, we wanted to throw this out there to you guys yeah. uh, to, to educate yourselves. A lot of our audience is reaching that age or at that age, and, and all of our audience will be at that age at some point or another. Um, you can go into that time of your life prepared with a lot more information than the drug companies or your doctors are ever going to give you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yes. It's 
a sad state. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Well, so stay healthy, guys. Yeah. Don't worry about your hair and investigate, uh, you know, other options if you're experiencing uh, this, this non-cancerous prostate enlargement. Yes. Go steam. Go steam. I like that. Well, at least we'll give it a, give it a, a, a look-see. Yeah, and, man. And certainly consider that, uh, you know, a treatment that's done one time may be a lot more beneficial than drugging yourself up. Really? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. saying. Indeed. Indeed. And with that, happy I note. Guess, <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll end by saying that men are good. <laughs> All right. And they are. Okay, guys. Oh, indeed they are, and fathers are essential. Indeed. You all take care. Take care. We'll see you now. Bye-bye.